Hello, I'm the Dark Master, and welcome back to the History of Elephants. This time, we'll be, be going over the Elephantiform's basal members. Last time, we went over the first and now extinct suborder of proboscideans, the plesi elephantiforms. The other living suborder is elephantiforms, meaning elephant forms. They are defined as the order that contains the elephants and their extinct relatives. Just like every group, there are basal members. So, in this case, there are four genera, Enrithium, Hemimastodon, Paleomastodon, and Pheomia, which I'll be going over those today. The first wave of proboscideans was mostly dominated by plesi elephantiforms and basal proboscideans. However, in the late Eocene, the elephantiforms joined the scene, the earliest being Pheomia, 37 million years ago, contemporary of the supposed first elephant, Moetherium proving it wasn't, despite common belief. In life, it was a medium-sized browser in the ecosystem, larger than a lot of plesi elephantiforms, but smaller than the baratherium that it shared its habitat with. Pheomia is larger than moetherium at around 8.2 feet, and vaguely resembled an elephant. However, its face was radically different. According to the shape of its nasal bones, it is believed to have had a short trunk. From the skull, it is known it had short tusks on the upper jaw and shovel-like tusks on the bottom jaws. These are a hint of future lineages of shovel tuskers, which we'll go over in later episodes. They could have been used in self-defense or for scraping bark off trees. Of all the basal elephantiforms, it was the most successful, living for 7 million years, from 37 to 30 million years ago, although it wasn't the last one. The second genus, Paleomacedon, was similar if a bit shorter lived than the previous one. It had a shorter skull and overall was smaller at 7 feet tall at the shoulder. Despite its name, it's not particularly related to the famous Mastodon, rather being a basal ancestor to both elephants and the Mastodon. Its teeth structure is very similar to that of Fiumia. Its ears were located to the top of its head so it, they could keep out water. Trust me, the naming conventions of Mastodon's We'll be going over in a separate video. It's very confusing, but it'll be explained soon. The third basal genus, Erytherium, is considered the missing link between modern elephants and their ancestors. Its fossils are found in the late Oligocene, some 27 million years ago, in the Horn of Africa. And this genus is the oldest proboscidean, featuring the horizontal tooth displacement seen in modern elephants. It was smaller than the previous two genera at 4.3 feet at the shoulder and 1,067 pounds. Its name comes from Eritrea, the country in the Horn of Africa where it was found. The species name is, honors the farmer who discovered the specimen. The final basal elephantiform and the final genus we'll be discussing is the very obscure Hemimacedon not really related to the real Macedons very closely, but it does have one thing that gives it at least some distinction from the other basal elephantiforms. You see, it was located in Pakistan, in Asia, outside of Africa, in the late Miocene. How it got there, you might ask? Well, you see, it crossed a land bridge that developed during the early Miocene that allowed the elephants to spread beyond Africa through the Middle East into Asia, Europe, North America, and eventually South America.
But we'll be going over that next time. This genera died out soon after spreading to Pakistan, but not before seeing the second wave of proboscidean diversification begin. We shall explore in the next two episodes of the History of Elephants this great rediversification. I'm the Dark Master, and I'll see you next time. Remember to subscribe if you'd like to see more of this style content.